actually I don't want to give too much of an introduction because he'll speak for himself. In other words, uh, uh, let's say whatever he says, just either accept it or think about it. You don't have to take it as dogma or anything like that. There is no dogma. And uh, hopefully you'll get a great message that will help you on your spiritual journey or in your life's journey, whatever you want to call it. So, I can say a million things, but I think uh, I'd like to have David come up now. So, welcome David. David. Thank <laughs> you. 
because before we get to the place, you say, now parking space, we, we got like six consecutive <laughs> parking spaces right over there. But it's like you're not trying to, to do anything or control anything, but you're just living in the joy. And then everything you do, everyone you meet, everywhere you go, just reflects that joy. And uh, we just had lunch before we got here today. And so we were at Frank's restaurant down the street, and just the whole place was lit up. And uh, people taking our pictures, and you know, they were taken away from the leaves. Before I made it to spirituality, where people talk about sacred sites, or sacred places, sacred gurus, you know, you start to get into the joy of, of that it's all love, and that who you are is love. And that when you're in touch with who you are, that everything around you just reflects that love. And that's really what this awakening is about. Welcome, come on in. So, um, I just show up uh, at these gatherings. I never have anything planned to talk about or uh, planned to say. I just am in a state of, of happiness and joy. And generally, in these kind of situations, people uh, just start asking questions about, um, you know, about the state of mind, about, um, questions about faith and forgiveness and how you get in touch with grievances and um, how the mind works, um, questions about the universe, the cosmos and, and different things, um, metaphysical questions. Uh, it doesn't, I always say there's no good questions or bad questions. Um, it's all perfectly orchestrated, so don't hold back on anything. You don't feel like there's anything taboo or or whatever, just let it fly with whatever comes to your heart. Because I also feel like spirituality is meant to be practical. It's not, we don't need any more theologies. We've got enough theologies on the planet right now. Everyone can want to go experience. And that's really what religion is. It's not a theology. What I'm going to talk about today is not about a particular book. I'm not an advocate of any particular book or path. Um, when I travel to other countries and this and that, I just let the, the, the symbols come in a way that they're most helpful. So I'm invited to a country where they don't talk about Jesus. That's fine with me. Uh, I've done the other years past year, and um, uh, one man identifying himself as part of the atheist. And so I'm like, great, I've been with you, Arthur. And you know, he was saying, you know, well, I'm an atheist, but I think that if there is a God, that his name must be Arthur. I said, <laughs> and, uh, and he said, and I believe that we're all connected, and we're all part of one line. And, hey, Arthur, the atheist. Yeah. You know, we are. So, and, so I would say from the day of enlightenment that you, you find yourself unable to make distinctions anymore. It's not like you, you stop them, and you just find that you're incapable of judging. So I don't, I don't know what is believers or non-believers. What's the difference between a believer and non-believer, or someone who believes in God or not? Uh, there was a, a book that Jesus um, dictated called the Psycho Government Pamphlet, where he said, this is from Jesus Christ, who belief in God is unnecessary, for God can be but known. Hmm. In other words, the beliefs of the study studies, and it doesn't matter whether you even have a formal belief or not, in the end, when you learn to forgive and release all the error from your mind, regardless of what you believe in, you have an experience of God. 